Could somebody please stop this planet? I am done. I want to get off. In brief moments like this, I actually do understand why uh, some people seek to be other kin, you know, in this brief moment, because quite frankly, I don't, I don't want to be human either. And you know, this isn't in response to something I saw on the news or something I read, at least not specifically. It's not one thing. It's kind of a collection of a lot of things. I don't actually have a direction for this. I just realized that. I just want to vent. I want to scream from the top of my lungs how I hate women and I hate being a woman. But then humanity rears its ugly head and reminds me that it wouldn't be any better being a man. In fact, I think it would be worse to be a man. It's my honest opinion. I think I would lose a lot of privileges by being a man. You know, people who transition from female to male, you're brave, babe. You are so brave because I don't know why anyone would essentially pick what society has made the losing team. I hate the fact that um, a woman and a man, you know, they sleep together. That doesn't bother me. But it's the, you know, afterwards. All right. So once the man ejaculates, his rights are over. Okay. He no longer has any rights as far as anything that happens after the point of ejaculation. So exit stage left, you know, bye guy. Now you got a girl. You got a girl who is uh, potentially pregnant. Let's go with she is pregnant. So now this girl has the choice between um, having the child, putting the child up for adoption or having an abortion. Whatever she decides goes double for the man. So if she decides to have the child, whether he's in the family picture or not, he's paying for the child. If she decides to have an abortion, he can not say whether he's for or against this position. He just has to accept it. And same with adoption. Whether he wants the child or not, it matters not. It's only up to her. My question is, why don't we change the system a little bit? Why don't we change the system to say, look, you know, in a, the same amount of time that a woman can decide whether she wants to have an abortion or she wants to uh, give it up, well, she can decide up to option right up until birth, beyond. But, you know, like if, if she wants, if a certain time period is restricted for women to decide whether or not they're keeping a child, there should be, and, and, and again, this is probably just me, but there should be a time in there for a man to be able to say, listen, I'm not ready or I'm not willing either way to be a parent, to be someone's father, to be financially responsible for another human being. But no, because at least here in Canada, every child that's born has the right to two incomes. Okay. They literally like that's part of the whole legal thing here is that a child has the right to income. So if you've got a mother who basically said, right, I have the kid. Now you take it and leaves the child with the father. Um, I'm not sure actually. I, I rarely ever see that particular situation happen. So I'm not sure if she'd then be responsible for uh, child support payments. I just know that for a boy, yeah, he's responsible. It doesn't matter what he's going through. He could be in the worst position of his life. He could be hospitalized or on the verge of hospitalization for mental illness or, or something that's very, you know, life changing. It doesn't matter. You know, our, our laws are written in such a way that no one cares. I'm sorry that you're going through a bad time in your life, but you ejaculated into this woman and she had a child. Well, I know you didn't have a choice in that child, but fuck you, you're responsible. And, and that's, and that's where we are in this world. I mean, and, and people, and, and this is just one case, this is just one thing that women do distinctly have a privilege over men. And you know, when I look at these, the, recently there was stuff in the news about uh, male birth control. And what I'm waiting for with the whole male birth control thing is the women protesting saying that they no longer have control over whether or not a human being is born. Once men get the right to have birth control, and, you know, it's effective, at least as effective or hopefully as effective as the pill, if not something close. You know, obviously they still have the right to do that now, but you see, a woman who wants to get pregnant can sabotage a condom, but it's a little harder to sabotage an injection that the boy gets, you know, every so often. You know, again, where's the men's choice in that? Because they, they don't actually have a choice. If a man finds himself in a really terrible situation where he loves a woman, but she beats the shit out of him, if he ever wants to leave that situation, well, I, I hope he has friends and family who he can talk to. 
I mean, you know, it's not like he would feel shame out of beating his ass getting beat by a woman. I mean, you know, it's not like he could benefit from going to a, uh, I don't know, a shelter? Yeah, yeah. Can't imagine that he would benefit from that. Assholes. There's just nowhere for men to go. There's nowhere for men to go and there's no one to listen when men complain. It's the world we live in right now and I realize that the world is a pendulum and it no sooner stops in one end than it swings to the back to the other. Like it is not something that's going to stay. All right, but it is something that we have been arguing about at least since the 90s and I can prove that because I've got some magazines that had an opinion on these type of situations from the man's point of view from the 90s and you know like i don't know if anyone else reads old articles from adult magazines but i do i was reading articles out of an old penthouse magazine actually to be specific penthouse comics and I'll probably will actually do a video of, of showing these because, you know, this is just kind of off the top of my head, this particular video. But it's true. It's it's just the way, it's just the way that of the world for men. And, and we as men, they're just expected to accept this. They're just expected to go, oh, well, that's my lot in life and work and support and et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm not saying that the system is wrong and it should be just totally shut down and start over. That's not going to work for anybody. We really start need to start making allowances for people, for, for men. It's just, mm, I feel bad for the male gender. Like, I really genuinely do. And maybe it's just because I can see both sides of it. Maybe it's because of my fence-sitting nature that I can see that the system isn't fair for men. And we're so obsessed as a society right now to be focused on talking about women and what women want and what women go through and et cetera, et cetera. And we've forgotten that men go through it too. And, you know, I would encourage anyone who's a diehard feminist, like someone who's died in the wool, you know, men are these beasts outside the gates and we women delicate, fragile flowers on the inside. But if you're that dedicated to the female empowerment, to women, take a half an hour out of your day, just one day, and go and read some articles from the other side. Just, just out of curiosity, go see how the other side lives for a bit. I mean, it's really not going to take a whole lot of your time. Just open your mind, stop prejudging a situation, and read the articles, watch the video, do whatever it is you need to do to get the information into your head. And hopefully it can work its way down to your heart. Because what we're doing to men in society is not fair. I know you think that because they had it good for centuries prior, that the men today can suffer. But that's not entirely fair because that's basically punishing the child for the sins of the father. And while that may be perfectly biblical, it's not tenable in reality. At some point, one of you, whether it be the male or be the female, unfortunately, I think this one has to be the female, where you really need to go stop, hold up a second. You know, maybe we could be egalitarian, or we could deal with uh, humanism rather than feminism. You know, at the very least, could you take out uh, for the benefit of men and women out of the feminist definition? Because it, it actually really doesn't benefit men. I mean, it's really hard to benefit men while benefiting women in certain situations. Okay, and, and we're talking about benefit. It's, it's not about creating equal footing anymore. The laws have been changed. I mean, whether you want to admit it or not, the laws have been changed. So the big fight for feminism is over. Now the fight resides in the hearts and minds of the people. And let me just tell you a little bit about human psychology. Good luck. <laughs> no, um, you're not going to change the hearts and minds of people who have espoused these particular beliefs for most of their lives. I mean, I understand that you're, you know, 20-ish, that you think all these things about the world and all these changes that can be made and all these things that you could do that could benefit, yada yada. Like, it, it, there's plenty of things that can be done to support feminism absolutely but you don't need to tear all of them down to support men as well so i'm not saying go out there feminists and and, and ditch feminism and start working for men i'm not suggesting that because you know what a leopard can't change its spots i get that you are a feminist and you will never work 
for the benefit of men. So maybe just take that out of your definition. Take that out of the way that you try to justify your existence because you're not helping men. And by saying that you're helping men and then not doing it, you're doing them an even greater disservice. Okay. And I'm not saying that women can fight for women and men can fight for men because it's just not the way the world works. It's not such polite lines of delineation. You know, it's, it's not that easy. We are all involved in this world. We are all involved in the environment, the roads, whether or not to keep trees alongside a boulevard, that's not a gendered thing. That's not going to affect one gender more than the other. But that's what we do as a society. We try to make it one person's, one group's problem rather than being, you know, everybody's problem. And feminists, this one's for you, ladies. The law has been changed to suit the feminist beliefs and ideals. A woman has the right to vote. A woman has the right to an income. Uh, the woman has the right to work or to wear a bra or not. A woman has the right to equal pay in the workplace. You know, a woman has all of these rights that they do scream about in certain videos. But what you're seeing, ladies, is while the law has changed to reflect the feminist ideals, the hearts and minds of individuals have not. And no matter how many times you stand on a corner screaming or protesting or bleeding through your pants, it doesn't matter what you do that way because the system is already changed. You are now fighting a systemic battle for individual issues and that's not working. It's not fucking working. All right, reevaluate your shit. Man, I realize that feminism has a place in this world just like, you know, obviously men have a place in this world. We all have a place in this world which is why I want to fucking leave, but I can't. So since I'm forced to be here and deal with all this shit, then ladies, seriously, I respect the fact that you believe that this crusade that you're on. But understand that the Holy Grail has already been found and what you're having issue with now is whether or not to drink water or wine from it. And that's it. That's your issue, okay? You have the right to hold any position in any company. You have the right to your bodily autonomy. You have the right to uh, vote. You have the right to own property. You have the right to burn your bras. You have the same rights that every other Canadian has. So what are you fighting for? Oh, I know what you're fighting for. You're fighting because the people who hold the positions of enforcing the laws that you have already changed are old people and they're a little harder to change than the law. It's not fair. You know, it's not fair and it's not right, but it doesn't matter. You see, and this is what I'm trying to tell you feminists, okay? You are out there every day fighting for battles that you have already won. Your issue is not the battles themselves, but how you can or cannot benefit from them, okay? You can have any position you want. You want to talk about being the CEO of a company? Great. But they're not going to take a woman out of, let's say, out of university who's got all the qualifications, sure, but no experience. Experience. They're not going to say, right, you can be on the board because you've got a vagina. That's just not the way life works. It's not the way it should work. I mean, if there are all men CEOs in a company, that's because those men are probably in their 40s, 50s, 60s. They've worked in the company, if not in the business, for a decade or longer. Well, of course, they're going to be the CEOs. But what you need to focus on, feminists, are not people in the top positions. Because I know that's, that's a cherry on the top of a Sunday that we all want. But that is something you need to earn. So instead of saying, oh, well, feminism is still valid because, you know, we don't have women in top executive positions. Well, maybe take a look at the people who are on the track to becoming CEOs, who are, you know, in the, I don't know what you'd say it, I guess, who are in the wings to become a, a CEO. You know, the vice and the juniors, are they all men as well? Are they all 20 something men? Have there been any women who have applied for the position? Do you have any women that are qualified in the company that you could put forward or at least speak to about it? Sure. All right. But that's the thing. It's not instantaneous, ladies. It's not something that someone snaps their fingers and it's going to be done. You need to understand that the prejudices that you benefited from in the past still exist and the prejudice that you suffered in the past still exists, but it does not exist in the law. And that is all you could have and could or should change. You want 
want to change the hearts and minds. Great. You took a hard stance to change the laws. Do that. That's cool. But now you need a softer approach. Now you need a way of convincing people to be on your side, not forcing them. You can force the change of laws. You cannot force people to change their minds. You cannot force people to become feminists or to believe in a feminist ideal. Nothing I'm saying on this particular track is going to change your point of view unless you're ready to look beyond your point of view and at least try and see the other side. I mean, honestly, if you could see both sides clearly and you still pick your side, great. But you may say that you feel that way right now. You may say that, well, I have looked at the other side and I still choose this side. Excellent. Defend your position. Uh, what? Defend my position? No, I, I believe this way because I believe this way. Then you don't actually believe that way. You just prefer it? That's not a belief. That's not a strong platform. I mean, I don't, I hate seeing these interviews on protests and in the streets and everything else who can't say why they're at that particular protest. They can't say, listen, I'm here because, I don't know, like the Women's March. I'm here because I believe that the world is misogynistic. Great. Explain to me, you know, give me an example of that. If you can't give me an example as to what you believe, I, I'm not really sure you're in touch with what you believe. Maybe you want to, I don't know, reassess that. The point is, <sighs> I'm done. I'm not done. I want to be done. I want to be done so bad. I want to just curl up under my blankets and pillows and just stay in my fort and color. I, I don't want to deal with humanity. I don't want to deal with reality, but I just spent 10 minutes, 20 minutes telling you that you need to deal with reality. So fuck it. Here we go again. Like I'll vent about this a lot, a variety of different ways, but for today I'm good ish. Anyway, it's a sick, sad world. I'm Moggy. Have a great day.